Good morning, Lavish fam. Welcome back to another vlog. Today is Monday. Monday is the start of a new week, a start of new things, a start of everything new. So um, I am looking crazy today because it's DIY day. <laughs> today I am doing a DIY. Um, I'm off to a late start. I have no excuse as to why because i've been woke for five hours um but better to start late than to not start at all right so um as i've told you all before that i want to do a new entryway table um the current entryway table is one of the first diys that i did when i decided that i was going to start using power tools and it's just been okay for me. I get compliments on it when people come over, but I've always known that once I realized that I can do better, that I wanted to do better. So let me show you what it looks like currently. So this is the current table. The current setup. And like I said, it's not a horrible table. Um, Ariel's already asked me if she could have it, which I am perfectly fine with giving to her. But at that time, I did not know to look for wood to make sure that it's completely straight. It's just look, little things that I did not check for. So it's not completely straight right here. Um, it's just little things. But I know I can do better. So that's what we're going to be doing today. We're going to be doing a new entryway table and I'm going to actually talk you through the steps because if you want to do something like this, you can also do it. So let's go to the garage. Okay, so for this project, the only thing that I'm going to be using is I have these two uh, one by 12 by, I want to say six feet. Let me just make sure, but I believe they're one by 12 by six feet. Yeah. One by 12 by 72 inches. Um, and I bought these at Lowe's for about $16 each. And then I bought four of these one by one by three by sixes. So these will be used as well. And these were about five dollars and fifty cents each. And I also got these from Lowe's. So that is the only lumber that I'm gonna be using for this project. So I need to cut these, um, I need six that are 12 inches long, and I need four that's going to be about 29 inches long. So, for the project, I'm going to be using These, I have to do nothing to other than sand them down a little bit prior to priming. So these do not need to be cut at all. So like I said, this is going to be a pretty simple project. All right. And then for these, like I said, I need six that are um, 12 inches long. And I need four that are 29 inches long because that'll be the height of the table. The table will be 29 inches tall and about 12, about 14 inches deep, I think. The first thing that I'm going to do is measure out my legs. And like I said, they're going to be 29 inches long. So I know I need four of those. So I'm going to go ahead and measure those out. Okay. 
Okay, so what I'm going to be doing, I'm going to be using my miter saw. Let me show you. Okay, so here's my miter saw. I purchased this from walmart.com and I, I think it was on sale. This is probably like a seven and one four. It's not huge. It was not expensive. It may have been around a hundred dollars. It was not expensive and it's not hard to use. So with that being said, let me just show you the way of opening it and we'll go from there. So hold please. Okay, so it has this little lock pin here. You want to push push down on the miter saw a little bit, pull that out, and it opens right up. So it's pretty simple to use as long as you are careful. It has lots of little things to keep you from hurting yourself or so when you push it down. So one second. I'm left-handed, so <laughs> Um, I have the camera also in my left hand. So when you push it down, the guard comes up, the blade goes down, and it's kind of keeping you from hurting yourself. I am not by any means an expert at using power tools. Do not quote me. Do not <laughs> say, oh, yeah, she's a uh, no. I am self-taught. I have not been to anyone's schooling, any, I have no certifications. This is all self-teaching. So this is how it works for me. I cannot speak for anyone else. This is how it works for me. Okay. I always believe in trying to make sure I wear my safety things. I have on my um, noise counseling headphones and I also have on um, protective eyewear. I also have on gloves because I tend to get splinters and calluses. So I'm trying to do better <laughs> with taking care of my hands. Okay, so with that being said, I put this, I want to make sure that it's always level straight up because, hold on, let me show you again. This is not battery operated either. It actually has a plug, which I love because I don't have to worry about charging it. Um, so you always want to make sure that you have it completely flush with the zero so that it's going completely straight down. But you see you can do a 45 degree angle, a 15 degree angle, a 30 degree angle on this machine. But for this one I want to be a zero degree. So I want to put it here. I make sure that it's completely lined up and I'm going to hold it. But what I do is to make sure that I get it completely flush before I actually turn on the, the machine to cut I like to put it there like this line up my line up my line completely and push it until I know for a fact that that blade is hitting my line so right now it's over about not even an inch but I need to push it over a bit before and I keep doing it without turning it on until I know that it's completely perfect. If you don't want to invest in a miter saw, there are much cheaper options to getting this done. I will link the um, oscillating, is it an oscillating tool? I think it's an oscillating tool that I use. It's a multi-purpose tool. I'll show you what it looks like. Hold please. Okay, so if you are not ready to buy uh, a miter saw or a circular saw, which I also use in most of my videos, um, I also have showed you all this multi-purpose tool. I purchased this also from Walmart and I got it online. I will link it below. This is about $20 and you can get the same cut by using this and it's only about $20, $23 on Walmart and it comes with different little um, pieces to go on the end. But this one right here will also get the job done and like I said, I'll link it below. I am not sponsored on this video. I'm basically just giving you the knowledge that I have taught myself and if you are someone who wants to try DIY projects and just didn't know where to start, I'm just kind of helping you out with some basic things that I've taught myself over the last year and a half. So I'm going to be using my miter saw though because it gets the cuts done quicker.
Nice and perfect every time. I also like to take the first cut, line it up, and cut the next pieces so that way I know they're the same length every time. Now I know I have this piece left over. I know I need 12 inches. I need six 12 inch pieces. So first I'm gonna make sure that this is exactly 12 inches because sometimes wood is not the co complete 12 because this will go across. The and that's what I need. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and finish up my cuts and then we'll go to the second part. Okay, so all my pieces are cut. I literally had an entire one by three left over. I like to buy more, a little bit more than I need just in case because anything can happen and I don't wanna have to go back to the store in the middle of a project because I've had to do that many times, but today everything worked out and I can use that for another project. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna lock this and move it out the way. So my six pieces and my four pieces. Before I start putting my pocket holes in, I'm gonna just basically put my gloves back on. Just take like a some sandpaper and just kind of knock off the little edges right here that are like kind of flaking off a little bit but I'm going to do it gently because I don't want to tear them up too bad. Good morning. Okay so what next I'm going to, what I'm going to be doing next is putting pocket holes in all um but well two pocket holes on each side of these. If you do not want to invest in a Craig pocket hole jig. I think it may have cost me about $50. Um, you can always use just regular screws. They probably will show or you can use L brackets and I'll show you what those are. These are L brackets and they do the trick as well. They will hold the two pieces together in place so you would basically because these are going to be like your, your shelves or whatever. So it will literally just sit up under there like this. And you would just screw it into place. And it would hold it into place as well. But for my project, I'm going to go ahead and use my Craig and put pocket holes in. Because I have it. But if I didn't. I would use these if I didn't want to invest in a critic. So the pocket hole jig that I have, um, it's a Craig um, jig R3. And then if you open it up, it basically tells you the material thickness, the screw length that they recommend you using, and then how to set your Craig jig for that actual size material. So we're using both for our uh, boards are one inches so we're going to be using one inch screw lengths and they want you to set it to a one inch marker just the FYI my Craig jig did not come with the Craig, the Craig clip which I did not know when I bought it so I ended up having to go to Lowe's because I think I ordered this offline and then I had to go to Lowe's just to get this clip and it was not real expensive either And then inside of the box, it literally has like your jig, the, the circulating thing to actually put the holes in there. 
you basically will unlock this slide it up to the one inch mark where it tells you to slide it mine is a little older so and once you get it in the position where you want it you go back and lock it so that it doesn't move all right and then you just put it in your drill as such and there you have it Okay, so all of my pocket holes have been drilled. I'm going to be using the Craig screws. However, comma. They are a little pricey. They are a little pricey. I'm not even going to lie to you. Um, and there's always another way to get things done. So if you don't want to buy the Craig brand, Lowe's have, I don't know about Home Depot because I don't shop there. I only know about Lowe's. Lowe's have a much cheaper brand. All you need to do is look for the pocket hole screws. And it actually fits the exact same um, nail bit as the Craig's. It's always more than one way to get it done. And the only reason I'm using the Craig ones is because that's what I have. Because I did not look prior to knowing that they had these and I need one and a half anyway and these are only one inch. I'm also gonna be using wood glue. Um, I, I usually put the wood glue on the edge and then I put it together and then screw it together and that just gives it a really firm hold in addition to the screws. Okay, so first thing first is since this is one of my legs, I'm going to be putting this onto here. And I have the, the holes facing the bottom of the leg so that you do not see them when it's put together. So I also will be using my square to make sure that it's completely um, level and that it's, a com that it's perfect. So I just sit that in the middle, push it up against it, and make sure that it's correct. Now I'm going to add some glue and then I'm going to go ahead and screw. Alright, I checked my square. It's completely flush the way that it should be. Now I'm going to go ahead and just, for the sake of time, I'm going to go ahead and add the other pieces and get both of built. Okay, so now that I have both of my leg pieces put together, I have an indention on the top because I want my top shelf to sit inside versus sitting on top. So that's why this one is a little bit further down and then that one will sit flush against the floor. I want to put a middle shelf in there and I'm going to be just using a old piece of wood as my marker. Because why not? <laughs> um, so I'm just kind of eyeing it and seeing where I want it to go and I think I want it to go right here. So that's why I'm going to be using this as my marker and then I'm going to put my bridge across here. I love that. 
first one has the square. So this is what the first leg is looking like. All right. We add the second shelf in the other leg, and then we can take it in the house and put it together. Make you feel Alright, I'm just going to be using these regular one and a half inch screws to attach the pieces together. This table is much longer than I anticipated in my head because y'all know I wing things and in my head it made sense. I still love the design however comma I think what I'm going to do just for added support is put a bar down in between these two pieces on the bottom just for added support because it's so long but it looks great in the space because this hallway is super long so it makes sense it's just that I feel I need to put another piece just for the added support so let me go cut that piece and then I'll be back okay so this is what the table looks like And the only thing that's left to do is sand it, prime it, and paint it. But I'm going to have to take a break because I have somewhere to be. Um, and I need to shower and get dressed for that. So I will come back in a little while and we'll go to the next steps. Good morning, guys. So it is literally the next day, the next morning. I did not come back to work on this table at all yesterday after my appointment. I just kind of, it was a long day and long story short, today we're going to, my plan is to finish it. Um, so as I was thinking yesterday, the more I thought about it, the more I realized, because y'all know, y'all know that I don't really sketch things out. I don't really, I just kind of have an idea and I go with it. And that's the same thing about this table. I just was at the store picking up items that I felt would make this project work but as I continued on with it I realized that the table is extremely long which is fine because like I said the hallway is extremely long so it it's fine however comma these are one inch boards so they're not really thick and when you add stuff to them I don't want them to buckle at all so I went back to Lowe's yesterday and got some more of these one by threes and I'm going to add one of these planks like I put 
the one that I put down here for extra support, I'm going to also put one under each of these boards here just for extra support. So I went back to Lowe's and bought two more of these one by threes. So I'm going to go ahead and cut them down and put them under here, under each board, secure them under each board the same way I did down below just for extra support when I start putting stuff on these shelves just so that they, you know, don't buckle at all in the middle. So I'm going to do that the same way I did every other cut. And then I'll be back and I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is go and caulk all of the seams just so that it looks finished um, prior to painting. So I'm going to go and do that now, just uh, applying a thin coat of a fast drying um, caulking. And it's for paint projects. This one is just a little cheap one. And it's the DAP brand. Okay, so we're finally at the point where we can paint. So I'm going to go ahead and get everything prepped. Um... Everything has been sand down, caught sand down again. And then, um, so I'm ready to go ahead and start priming. So I'm going to go ahead and put my drop cloth down. And I'm also going to put some boards or something under the bottom of the piece so that it lifts off the floor and I can, without actually me hitting like the floor and I can get under it pretty well. So that's what I'm going to be doing right now. Alright, so it's 11.24 and I just finished priming. Um, so I'm going to take a lunch break and then I'm going to come back and paint. Okay, so lunch is over. It's 12 o'clock and um, I think I'm going to use the same gray that I had on the previous table. But I think I'm going to paint the legs and all of that stuff black. So the color that I'm going to be using is this um, Sherwin Williams Ellie Gray, which is like I said, the color that I had previously. Um, and I will have that link below, well, the information below, and it's just a satin finish. So let's open it up. I have a whole shelf of different colors of paint and stains left over from all these projects and I do not plan to buy any paint anytime soon. Okay, so I've added the first coat of the Ellie Gray already to the two shelves. And now I'm going to be using some leftover. It's Tricorn Black, Sherwin Williams Tricorn Black, uh, to the legs and things or whatever. Because, like I said, I got plenty of paint in the garage. So I'm just going to be using this because I already have it. Mm -hmm. 
I still have this table um, sitting up on these pieces of wood, these two by sixes. So that's why it's rocking a bit because it's not level and I'm just praying that I don't knock it over. But that's the reason why the table is rocking if you're wondering. So it's currently 2 o'clock and the second coat of paint has been added and I think I'm just going to let it sit for a while completely dry um, and then come back and see if I need to do anything else. <laughs> So this is the finished results of this very simple DIY <laughs> um, entryway table. I love the simplicity of it. I love it. I love the contrast and the colors. Of course, I picked the same color um, that I had before, which was Ellie Gray by Sharon Williams. It matches the photo frame. It actually contrasts against the wall. Um, and... Then I picked the black because, of course, my doors in my house are black and it's a staple color in our home. I kept the same decor because I, ain't been to, I haven't been to the store to buy new decor and it still works. I will change it out as time goes or if I go out today and see anything, I may change it out. But for now, it works. Um, and yeah, so it, it's... <laughs> it's like I said, it's nice and simple, but yet sleek, and it actually fits the design of my home a little bit better. I absolutely love it. I love the way that it turned out, even though I had some little tweaks I had to make in the end. <laughs> um, because it is much longer than I thought it would be in my head, because you know, I didn't sketch it, I just kind of went with it. But now it's nice and supported, it's nice and sturdy. The top is very supported because I added. Well, the shelves are very supportive because I added that extra um, wood plank to make sure. And yeah, so that's it. If you guys have any questions, of course, you can always ask me in the comments and I try my best to answer all of them. Um, and I will see you guys in my next one. Bye.